we'll go ahead and jump in. So we're going to just have a brief um, introduction from Rachel DeSalle before we start. So Rachel DeSalle's investigative and narrative journalism pieces have changed laws, policies, hearts, and minds. He is a two-time recipient of the DART Award for Excellence for Coverage of Trauma and a 2016 Oxford Fellow. Her work is featured in two documentaries, I Am Evidence, which centers on the experience of survivors of the rape kit backlog, and Roll Red Roll, which examines the Steubenville rape case. So welcome, Rachel, to get us started. Thank you. Can you see us over here? Yes. Yep. Hello, everybody. So good morning and welcome to today's training. It can be really hard to make time and space to pause and think about our practices as journalists and as professionals. So we appreciate everyone that has been able to come today and to participate and to learn together. Um, when I was thinking about this training, I wanted to briefly set the table for where we are in this moment. Um, you know, especially when it comes to reporting on sexual violence. And I'm going to draw a little bit from my own experience as a much younger reporter. <laughs> so in conversations with my editors, when I started as a reporter, it was always clear that as a policy, we did not name survivors of sexual assaults mm -hmm. in stories, then only referred to as victims. There wasn't really a choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and as I started to form relationships with advocates and my local rape crisis center staff, the understanding was always the same. Survivors were always to be shielded and their stories were to be private, or at least their identities were to be private if their stories were safe. At one point, a um, couple years into my career, uh, I was working on a story and I approached a woman uh, who had been raped to see if she would be willing to speak with me. She was a black woman and she was in her mid forties and she had had multiple experiences with the justice system. Mm -hmm. As was my practice at the time, early in the conversation, I told her her name would not be used in the newspaper. And she paused, kind of looked at me and said, why? I didn't do anything wrong. That asshole did. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not doing this right. It was a moment that really changed my practice when it came to interviews. Now there are lots of things I do differently when I approach victims or survivors to potentially share their story. Now I present a spectrum of options for how they can participate from just giving me some information on background that would be important to me um, to know about their story, to informing them about um, my process of when a story might run, and to, to being completely public and open and preparing for that in the way that you would need to be prepared for that in this age of the internet where everyone can contact you all the time. So I also do a lot more explaining about my process as a reporter. Um, you know, so that people know what I'm doing as well as uh, what I'm, if I'm going to be asking them a lot of questions. So just, there's a couple of folks in the room who is familiar with the process of a sexual assault examination. Folks are familiar. I learned a lot about that process while reporting on sexual assault kit testing in Ohio. And one of the nurses who took a lot of time to teach me about this, Diane Daver, who's who's kind of semi-retired now, but still does some work. Um, and I remember her taking the time to walk me through each step and how nurses were trained to take their time and explain each thing that they were going to do and ask for permission to proceed. I really took that to heart and wove it in with my approach to reporting on sexual assault. I think we can do that as reporters, right? We can pause. We can make sure that we're in agreement on what we're doing. Um, we can work through any questions that folks have, and then we can move forward. Um, some journalists take issue you know, with what they see as giving control of a story. But the more that you learn about uh, sexual violence, the more that you know it's very important to make storytelling a collaboration. It's more of sharing control and making choices together based on each person's expertise. Maybe your expertise about storytelling and someone's expertise on their own life and what will work for them. Today we're here for a training and here's why that's especially important. In more than two decades of reporting, yes, that long, <laughs> not afraid to say it, um, so many stories that I've worked on have 
been about failures of systems. And often, aside from you know, having a bad apple in the bunch or a lack of funding, which is always a problem, a lot of stories come down to a failure of folks to be trained and held accountable to that training. Um, and one of the things that's really clear is that if we did spend the time to invest with law enforcement and other folks in training, they would be able to do a better job. The same is true for journalists. So news operations and journalists take on this accountability role. So it's even more important that we are willing to get the proper training to carry out our jobs with the knowledge and context, and also so that we don't exacerbate the stress or harm. If we're gonna ask other folks to do that and we're gonna report on it when they don't, we need to do it ourselves. I know that we have a mixed group here today, some journalists, some students, advocates, and allied professionals. And I really see that as a blessing when I saw this training was supposed to be for journalists and that other folks were coming too. I was really happy because some of the most meaningful learning experiences that I've had is when disciplines come together. And not only do we learn together, but we talk through our challenges and our techniques. And I know that we're gonna be doing that a lot today. We always get to a better place when we can share our experiences and figure out where they work well together. I also wanted to say that today's training is gonna include examples from reporting and personal experiences with sexual violence. Um, if at any time someone needs a moment, feel free to step away. We're recording the training. You can always come back to it. There'll be a toolkit later. And if you're here and you need any assistance or support, you can find one of the Ohio Alliance staff members and get any kind of support that you need. So I just really wanna, again, welcome everybody and say thanks for making this space to do this learning together. You're gonna to hear from a lot of them.